pull the string. Pull the string! Scurly, wow, wow, wow. Backstage. You are watching Bay Area Backstage. That is Bay Area Backstage. Hey, hey guys, my name is Tommy Gervin. I've been uh, playing guitar for the rock singer Eddie Money for 21, 22 years, something like that. Some god awful number. Anyway, we've been working real hard, lots and lots of miles on the road uh, each year. Eddie does got 100, 120 dates a year, so wheels are always spinning for us. And this gear, I get asked a lot uh, about tone and about gear and stuff, especially a couple days after a show. And uh, it's usually the same question, it's, a, it's about tone. And my, my, my gear is really, really straightforward. There's no overdrivers. What you're hearing is like the wood and the guitar and the, and the amps are doing everything correctly. Now, now I've got two basic sides to, to these amps. These are dual rectifiers made by Mesa Boogie. But I use all of the knobs on the guitar, including the tones, for different solos, different parts of the, of the song. This is loaded with Texas Specials in the front two spots. The back pickup is a Seymour Duncan hot rail. However, I get asked this question all the time, what's that pickup in the back? It's a Seymour Duncan hot rail, but it's made for the neck instead of the bridge. The bridge position hot rails are a lot hotter than the neck position hot rails. It's called Baby Hold On for all you kids out there. So anyway, so we're on the dirty side yet I'm playing that song.
talk about the setting and the amps. You can really screw up an amplifier sound by turning the knobs incorrectly. Now, years ago, on, I used to use Marshalls. Um, I still love the amps, but the old 50 watts, the 70, 71, 72, 50 watts, four inputs, no master volume. You could take those and go, and turn it all up, every knob, and then that's how they sounded good. You know, those amps were not actually made to distort, but they were actually made kind of crummy, so they did, and then, and then you know, nice sound. And I used to patch the, the four channels you could take, you could take, to make a very long story short, there was four inputs, you could patch some of the channels together and get a deeper, more boxy, tighter sound, which was what I've always been into, tone, tone, tone. Years ago, I used to do lots of gigs with a guy named Danny Johnson, and I would be glued to his amplifiers. Great tone guy. Rick Derringer, he played with Rick Derringer at the time. Eddie Van Halen, we were doing, my band with, at that time was doing all kinds of gigs with Van, hey, Van Halen, all kinds of great players. George Lynch, they're all about tone. You know, a lot of the guys are about the speed stuff, but I was always a little slower on the hand, and a little slower in vibrato and getting tone. These amps are set really dark. Um, on the dirty side, the presence is, depending on the, on the venue, the, on the dirty side, the presence is like way back at like 3 o'clock, which is almost off. The bass is like, uh, you know, looking at a clock, here's how I look at it, 12 o'clock, 1, 2, 3. The bass is either, either over here at, what would this be? This would be 9 o'clock. This would be 9 o'clock, 8, either 8, 9. And, but if I have to play through one cabinet, the bass is all the way on. Boogie stuff is very deep uh, sounding um, anyway, so the bass is kind of down. But the uh, mid range is over here at one o'clock, and the treble is off. See it, bud? And the presence is pretty much off of most of the time. And the overdrive is only at one o'clock. Now, you can turn these amps sound godlike if you just turn the overdrive all the way up, and that, that's what most of the guys do. They're playing the heavy gigs, you know, but this is not a heavy gig here. Now, these amps have two, two, uh, two sides, the clean side and the dirty side. Okay, that was the clean side. I mean, that was the dirty side I was showing you. Now, here, I just switched over to the clean, right? <laughs> Boogie amps have a natural kind of compression to them. They, they'll they'll squeeze, squeeze the clean side a little bit. Uh, now, the clean side is set pretty bright because this is a, a, a naturally a, a dark sounding guitar. But for songs like Think I'm In Love With Eddie, whenever, whenever I'm on the clean side, I'm usually going like this, blah, 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 all night. You know, if I'm going from clean to dirty, I usually turn on the chorus and the, and the stereo chorus and uh, the delay. There's probably an easier way to do it, but I'm an old school guy, so there it is. I'm sure a lot of you guys are going, hey, what's that?
because, you know, the reason I'm limping around is because when I was younger, they called it the accident, but it was like me messing around with the wrong things, chemical dependencies and stuff like that. Not that I ever really stuck a needle in my arm or got into that stuff, but I just want to tell the young people out there, you know, you can get drunk and drive your car off a bridge or kill people on the road or, or do some bad drugs. And, you know, my advice to everybody is the is a wonderful life that God gave us. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with being straight these days. Right, Tom? That's right. Uh, we tour all the time. I got five kids. I'll do anything to get out of the house. Now we tour all the time. It's a big country. We got a lot of fans out there. And uh, we put, put out the Want to Go Back record. Uh, we're getting a lot of airplay. Jessica was just on uh, MTV. We call it the MTV Sensation. So uh, she's bringing a lot of young fans. And Tommy's writing some great songs for her. I think it's just so we're having a really wonderful summer, man. Well, we still love Two Tickets to Paradise and Shaking. And, of course, everybody loves Take Me Home Tonight. It was the biggest fraternity song in America for the last 10 years. I want to thank Ronnie Spector for helping me out on that. And uh, time has been playing for two, guitar for me for 21 years. So we've met a couple of platinum records together. We've had a lot of fun. Well, I actually met uh, Mitch Ryder when I was younger, but he was in a bad mood because somebody stole his wallet. That's when I was a kid. I got a picture of my mother in there. I want my wallet back. Well, it was very cool. Uh, I got a lot of good advice from uh, Felix, Felix Cavallotti from the Young Rascals. I was a big fan of the Rascals coming up. And uh, I got a chance to hang out with Keith Richards a little bit. And, uh, you know, when you, you meet the Rolling Stones, you realize they're just, uh, they're just another club band, but it's, they're just a little older. They were really sweetheart. Of, and everybody was really super nice to me. And I realized that, you know, something about the wonderful world of musicians is we're not all that different, you know? Well, I got to tell you the truth, man. I had a lot of cars. I went to the bouncer thing back in the day when we did the shaking video. One of those cars was mine. I was into that really, at, you know, I was into it at, a, at an early age. And, you know, there's nothing like a 66 Impala. We know that. And we got a lot of, we got a lot of, you know, Chicano fans. We got a lot of Mexican fans. And, you know, I think the prettiest girls in, the, in, in the California to this day, since my wife ain't around, is some of those little Latino girls, man. <laughs>
what? You know what? A lot of Gary U.S. Bonds and, and a lot of, you know, Four Tops and a lot of, you know, just, some, you know, really good R&B. I grew up with a lot of great R&B. James Brown, Otis Redding, you know, Martha and the Vandellas, you know, just really good stuff, you know. You know, it's 98 degrees and you got a $7 radio, you know. A T-shirt on and a pair of shorts, you know, nobody gave a shit. You listen to good stuff. <laughs>
destroys the humanoid. Intruder alert, intruder alert. Yo, Papa, intruder, my name is...